Because I'm a fancy scientist, this episode is going to focus on the types of gifts that I like and that I'm most familiar with, which is clothes, fashion, makeup, accessories. I'm sorry, I know Black Friday is a lot about electronics, um, but I am just not as knowledgeable in those areas in terms of rec recommending more eco-friendly products. So if you have some ideas, I would love to hear from you. But I am fancy. I, I just like, I just like to dress nicer. I like makeup. I like traditionally feminine things or what we call stereotypically feminine things. And um, this has been hard for me as a conservation biologist because as I found out, there are a lot of things at odds with each other in these two worlds. So first I wanna talk about um, just in general gift buying, and then we'll go into specifically into some information about the fashion industry. As I mentioned, we're gonna talk about fashion a lot. So I wanna tell you some statistics about the fashion industry. And now I know people say that statistics are boring and they don't motivate people to change. But I was so ignorant for such a long time about the impact of the fashion industry on the environment. And I think now it's something that people talk about a lot more, but even just a couple of years ago, actually that's when I started my, my slow, journey, slow fashion journey. So what slow fashion is, is it's basically a fashion that is meant to last longer. And I'm not super old, I'm gonna be 40 next year, but I remember as a child, as a teenager, even in my 20s, going to my favorite stores, buying stuff, and it lasting a really long time. I actually lived with my brother in New York City, and I went to H&M before it was like all over the country, and I remember, I actually still have this sweater. I have a black sweater, so I must have gotten it um, let me see, I was probably there in 2001, 2002, so almost 20 years ago, and I still have that sweater. I still love this sweater. It's my favorite black sweater. Now, it is starting to get thin in the elbows, and you can see it, so um, I can't really wear it anymore, or I can't show my elbows. I have to, I have to keep my arms. <laughs> straight so that you can't see the thin parts of my elbows. But um, that just goes to show you like things were made better like just a couple of years ago, a couple of decades ago. And I embarked on my slow fashion journey because I was sick of my clothes falling apart. I was going to the same stores that I had always been going to. I would buy something. And then after a couple of wears, I noticed it would have holes or tears or, um, buttons would fall off, and some of these things you can fix, or it would pill and stretch and malfunction, and I just got really frustrated with that. So I started wanting to spend more money on clothes for higher quality pieces that I really love that would last me longer. So fast fashion is this idea that, um, because the fashion industry wants to, you to buy, and fashion is fun, I love fashion, um, they constantly have out new styles, new things, and it has changed so fast recently. I remember growing up, going to a store, and you would see the seasonal clothes there for like months at a time. I mean, a shirt might not go on sale for at least a month, maybe more, and now it's just like, constantly being replaced, replaced, replaced with new styles. So that's what fast fashion is, is that these clothes are made more cheaply and it's almost like they're thought of as being disposable. And I've heard people say things like this before, like, oh, it's so cheap, you know, I'll wear it a couple of times and then throw it out. Well, that might be a great idea for your budget, but it is not a great idea for the environment. So the fashion industry is a major polluter, a major carbon emitter, and it does this through several ways. So, um, and this is also tied in very much with human rights issues as well. I'm sure you are well aware that many of our clothes, um, or at least here in the United States, are made in um, countries like China, 
India, Indonesia, where they don't have to pay people um, the same wages and they don't even pay them good wages for themselves, for that country. They also often have to work in dangerous working conditions, working nonstop with few breaks. I've heard stories about women um, can't take bathroom breaks. If they, they menstruate, they're like not allowed to take care of it. So some, some real human rights issues for workers. So it's not just an environmental issue, it's if you care about people, you should care about fashion too. Lots of them also made by kids too, I should say. So our, our fashion industry pollutes, first of all, or, or harms the environment from the carbon emissions. So as the clothes are made overseas, they're then transported halfway across the world to sell. The clothes contribute to pollution by creating the fabrics themselves, creating the dyes. I've seen photos of places where, where lakes and rivers are polluted. They're colored uh, a, a certain color of dye, like red lakes, because of the, the dye used to make clothes. When you really think about it, there it's 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 really depressing all that goes into these clothes um, because it's not even it's not even that process, but it's also like the materials they're made up of. A lot of them have plastics. They shed plastics as we wash them. Another big factor is that so much fabric is thrown away. Um, so they cut out they cut out. Um, textiles, they cut out patterns out of textiles, and then they discard the scraps. So they're, they're literally just put into a landfill. So let me read to you um, some statistics. This is from a Vox article out earlier this year in 2020. Um, so, okay, so let me read some statistics to you from a Vox article that was published earlier this year in 2020. This article states that these are some of the most commonly repeated facts. That 8 to 10% of global greenhouse gas emissions comes from the fashion industry and that this is more than aviation and maritime shipping industries combined. Wowza! That the industry produces and sells somewhere between 80 billion and 150 billion garments a year globally and that nearly three-fifths of all clothing produced ends up in incinerators or landfills within years of being made. And an interesting thing about the last one is, um, I remember a story from, I would say it's about 10 years ago, when H&M, they couldn't sell enough of um, a certain garment and they had it in the dumpster with slashes through it so people couldn't, people couldn't take it and wear it, which is a shame because it could have gone to people who needed that cloth clothing, but you know, the idea is if they do that, then people won't buy it in stores. Now, having said those statistics, this article is interestingly enough about fashion misinformation and that these statistics are largely based on not a lot of good data. So, Although I'm reading you statistics that are not supported by data, we do know that the impact is huge and there really needs to be a lot more research on this. Um, I, For me, it doesn't matter as much these statistics, it's more about how massive the problem is. Even if it was 80 million to 150 million garments a year globally, it would still be mind-boggling for me personally. So it's a lot. It has a big impact. It's a lot. So I am going to give you some suggestions as to different companies that I like, different companies that I've used. But before I get started specifically with that, I want to talk to you about a certain type of company that um, you can or you should purchase from that is known for higher standards for the environment and for having ethical work conditions. And those are B corporations. 
So what a B corporation is, is uh, a B corporation is this, this third party organization and they evaluate companies based on their sustainability, the, their environmental impact, how they treat their workers. And in order to qualify as a B Corporation, you have to, you as a company have to meet certain standards. So they don't, they don't just accept anyone. And once you are a B Corporation, then you have to maintain your status. You have to constantly produce re reports or continuously every year <laughs> produce these reports. And B Corporations are also really big on transparency. So I'm headed over to the B Corporation website right now and you can actually search for different organizations. You can look at the different scores for different companies. They're rated on, um, it looks like they're rated on a scale of um, up to 200. Hmm, that's interesting. But, but basically the higher the score is, the better it is. And they rate on things like govern governance, workers, community, environment, and customers. So when I buy a product and I see that it's a B corporation, that makes me really happy because I know it's a company that is, that is doing better. Okay, so let's get started on my personal list of recommendations. I am actually not starting out with fashion. I am starting out with beauty and skincare, and this is because this is a corporation that I am really familiar with, that I absolutely love, and their mission is clean beauty, which I know gets thrown a lot, or, or thrown around a lot nowadays, but clean beauty is really based on the premise of or at least in their definition, how they feel about it, is about removing potentially harmful ingredients from skincare makeup products. Now, they operate by the precautionary principle, which states that if there is evidence that an ingredient is harmful for people, so if, or even animals in, la in, in laboratory studies, so if there is a study that shows that um, it can lead to DNA damage, it can cause, um, allergies, I mean, there's, there's a wide range of things, obviously things like cancer, they ban those ingredients from those, those products. They take the extra safe route. They don't want to take chances, even though the research might not have proved uh, causation. So in other words, you can have a study where somebody, um, where, where people are using a product and say like tumors come about, but you don't know if it's necessarily something else in the experiment or in the people and their genetics um, rather than the product itself. That's, that's just, um, correlation rather than figuring out doing an experiment where you can where you have control groups you can figure out if there's a causation pattern for it I didn't I definitely didn't explain that that well but basically in human beings it's really hard to establish causation of things because you can't manipulate human beings as easily as you can lab rats. There's a lot of ethical issues about it, of course. You can't just tell people to go live in this room and don't touch any of these things, don't eat any of these things, don't talk to these people. You can't manipulate people in that way. So it's very hard in human health studies to figure out because everyone has different DNA, um, they have different environments. Also, a lot of these um, ingredients might be accumulated over time, so it might be something that shows up after decades of use. So I prefer to keep my skincare, my beauty clean because um, here in the United States, the, the Federal um, Drug Administration does regulate it, but they don't regulate it as uh, carefully as in other countries. So for example, here in the United States, we have uh, 30 ingredients that are banned, but in Europe, they have, with the European Union, they have over 1,400 ingredients. So once I found that out, I made the switch to this company. So this is um, Beauty Counter. 
and all of their products are endorsed by the Environmental Working Group, which is a nonprofit um, that does use scientific literature. So some scientists critique this group. But the thing I really like about the Environmental Working Group is that you can go to their website, ewg.org, and research different chemicals, look at the different ingredients, and um, look at the scientific reports. So you can actually decide for yourself. Like if this is a study of 10 people giving an allergic reaction, maybe it's something that you are still okay using. But if it's something um, like parabens, which are not banned here in the United States and they have much more um, significant health consequences, you might not want to take a risk. So I ask you to do the research and look up your products. You can look up your products there at EWG. Org. But Beauty Counter is a company that um, EWG um, gives them their seal of approval for all of their, their products. And EWG, it's a, it's a nonprofit, it's, a, it's an independent organization, and their mission is um, cleaner products. A thing I really love, okay, let me, let me just tell you about Beauty Counter um, first, some of the reasons why I love them. So first of all, they're just the best skincare that I've used, period. Regardless of clean beauty, I was going into Sephora, buying different brands. I guess there I was buying paraben-free brands. But I would keep trying different moisturizers, and it really wasn't until I found Beauty Counter that I found something I absolutely love. Once I found out about their mission, um, they are certified B Corporation. Once I found out about that, I just love them, and I switched everything over to Beauty Counter. And I really like that Beauty Counter uses science. So um, they, they do partnerships with university research, research labs to get more research done on ingredients to make sure that they're safe. Um, they are not against the use of quote unquote chemicals. A lot of people say that their makeup or skincare is chemical free. This is um, not true. Water is a chemical but most people think of chemicals as being like manufactured chemicals. And Beauty Counter is not against synthetic uh, ingredients. They use them in their products. What they are against is um, synthetic or natural ingredients that show harmful results. Um, so recently they decided to get rid of all of talc um, and they are doing all their eyeshadows liquid now because of the, um, the links, um, from, from talc and, uh, I believe it's cervical cancer. Um, so they just want to be on the safe side. So that's their whole mission. Their products are amazing. They're definitely more of a luxury brand. They are a little bit more expensive, but they last a long time. So all my makeup, all my skincare is Beauty Counter. I just found some Beauty Counter lipstick, and they're the best too. They last forever. Like they're and their pigmentation is really intense. Um, like seriously, some of their moisturizers I've had for at least six months, the same exact bottle. Now, um, some people criticize Beauty Counter because they think they are um, an MLM or a, what's a multi-level um, marketing organization or a pyramid scheme, and um, they are different. Um, so I actually decided to join Beauty Counter and sell a uh, sell um, for them. So I'm an affiliate with them, and anyone can do this. But the difference between um, this organization and others which scam you, like I watched this one show talking about Lulu, LuLaRue um, where people had to, this one woman bought $11,000 worth, I think it was just a leggings, um, before she sold them. So with Beauty Counter, you don't have to do that at all. To become a consultant, you just have to pay a membership fee, I think it's $98 a year, and you get a training kit with that and some beauty products. You don't ever have to buy products throughout the year. Um, so if there's like a, like a lot of organizations that have that, they will make you buy all of their new products. You don't have to do that at all. I actually mostly purchase just for myself. Um, I have bought some other products too to potentially show people, but honestly, I, I, I talk about it online. The people buy it, they buy it. If not, they don't. Um, and then you don't have to recruit people either. So I love Beauty Counter. And remember, they're a B corporation. So they can't, by nature of being a B 
corporation scam you. It's impossible or they would lose their B corporation status. So for gifts, I think Beauty Counter is awesome. They have um, really great um, age-defined skincare, if that's the right way, age fight, wrinkle-fighting skincare. Um, but they also embrace more natural faces, which I which I love. Um, you'll you'll see women with with wrinkles on their website, and as I'm getting older, I appreciate that. So they have a lot of holiday gifts. Um, their makeup is gorgeous. I love it. And you can go to my beauty counter website and purchase from me if you choose to do so. Um, it's just beauty counter and slash stephanie .com. Um, and you can also just search for me when you check out. So I love, love, love beauty counter. Okay, so now we're gonna get into clothing. It's so funny because again today I was worried about going too short. I'm already at 22 minutes and this does not include the intro. Okay, so um, clothing. So uh, again, whenever you buy something, you're still consuming resources. So um, what I actually do for my clothes now, and this is what I, what I first stepped into because remember I said I wanted to buy higher quality clothes. So I actually wanted to buy designer clothes but I didn't feel like I could afford the designer prices and given what I was doing in my life, I'm a, I'm a scientist and at the time I was working at the museum and people did not really dress up for my job. So um, if I was working in a more corporate setting or um, you know something where I was selling and dressing up all the time, then yes, I would have made the investment. But for what I was doing, it didn't seem worth it to me. So I found from my friend, she's also another scientist, a fancy scientist, a website called The Real Real. And ooh, the lighting just changed here. <laughs> Sorry, if you're on YouTube, you can see this. If, you, if you're not on YouTube, you can't see this. Um, the Real Real. Um, so this is an online consignment shop and it um, has all different types of designer brands. Um, so some of these are really high-end, like Gucci, Chanel, and then others are more reasonable. Like I like um, um, Alice and Olivia and um, uh, Diane von Furstenberg. There's some more affordable things, Lily Pulitzer, um, the North Face. Um, so you can definitely find some more affordable pieces on there as well. You can search by your sizes, your color, your price range. So I love that. The only thing I don't like about the Real Real um, is that if you are bigger or curvier, it can be harder to find sizes that fit you because designers, they tend to skew smaller and straighter, like that typical model body. Um, so you do want to make sure you measure your body and they do post the measurements on the website which is great for the different articles of clothing and you can find something now for gifts for friends they um or for family they have jewelry so that's really easy to buy you don't need to know somebody's size and then um purses which i love i've always wanted a designer purse but again i wasn't sure it could justify the price so I have purchased from the real real where it's much more affordable and um, I don't care about having like the latest thing. And actually you, you can get the latest thing on there. There are, there are um, lots of items that are, that are very um, recent on there. So I love this place. Now, um, and even um, less expensive option, or actually this place does have designer garments as well, but this is more focused on your everyday store. This is ThreadUp, and they, I believe they're called the world's largest online thrift shop. I think that's what their, what their tagline is. And um, it's just like that. So just like the real real, you can put in your sizes, you can search by category, you can search by color. The other, the thing I really like about ThreadUp is that they have a lot of brands that I am familiar with. You probably are too. So I used to shop all the time at Ann Taylor, Banana Republic, um, The Limited, The Limited's even closed now. And I know my sizes and I know, um, yeah, my, I know my size is there. So um, I know like, okay, medium's probably gonna fit me. Um, so these are 
um, less expensive brands to begin with, and then given that they are um, on an online thrift store, they are more inexpensive. I actually got this shirt, this sweatshirt. It's like a, it's like a hood. It's like a hoodie, but it is without a hood. I unzipped it a little bit. <laughs> So if you're not on YouTube, sorry, you can't see that. But this is from Lululemon, which is an expensive um, sportswear brand. Um, and I think this sweatshirt cost me like 50 or $60, which might still sound like a lot to you, but Lululemon stuff is for a sweatshirt slash jacket, at least I'm gonna say $120. And um, I like shopping brands like Athleta on there. I know my sizes, I know this stuff is high quality. It's actually really funny too when I shop my favorite brands and I actually remember seeing it in the store and I'm like, oh, I missed that one. Now here's my chance to get it. So it gives you a second chance at finding things that maybe when it went on sale, it wasn't in your size. So that's really, really fun. The next one is something that I haven't tried, but I'm going to try and I'm really looking forward to trying it. And this is called Rent the Runway. So I think a lot of people know about this when they go to like formal events and they need to buy an evening gown. But what you can do is gift someone a subscription. This is what I'm gonna try out. And if you're not familiar with Rent the Runway, they um, have more designer brands and you basically choose to rent um, these, you basically choose however many garments your plan allows for. I think I'm trying the four garment plan. And you pick them out and you keep them for a month and then you send them back. And I think you can make adjustments and stuff like that. But this is a really great way, especially for people, like even myself, I, I post the same outfits on social media. And if you're an influencer, you gotta always be in fashion. And like people really care about this stuff in terms of promoting yourself. For me, it's more like, I just see fun things that I really want to try out, but I'm not sure if I wanna own. So this is an idea for me like trying them out and then um, potentially purchasing them or things that are just out of my price range that I wouldn't normally be able to purchase or I wouldn't normally be able to justify purchasing it because I wouldn't wear it that much. So I'm super excited about trying rent the runway. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some more clothing companies. Now these are just a few. Um, oh, I have quite a few here. So I'll go, I'll go more quickly through them since we're already at a half an hour. So this is for new clothing. So these are more sustainable options. And one thing that is really frustrating or the thing that is really frustrating for me is I mentioned I'm a fancy scientist. I tend to like color. Oh, I love sequins and sparkles and glitter, which I know is horrible for the environment because it's just plastic. So I don't really like to buy that stuff anymore. Um, but uh, with sustainable fashion, it's really hard to find stuff that is like like fun and bright and also like slim fitting. I find that a lot of sustainable fashion is really loosey goosey and like I said, I like to I like to dress more more feminine. Although I'm not really today. I'm very like gothic today in my black shirt. But it's still chic. Okay. So, um the first company is Reformation and I have actually not tried Reformation. I'm looking at their website. Um, but their clothes are gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I have always wanted to try them, um, but they're a little bit fancier. Um, so even even for like their day wear stuff, like I'm looking right now at their sweaters, um, they're like, like the cheapest ones are like 190. I don't know, here's one for $148, but it's, it's cashmere. Um, I don't know, here, here's one for $78, but um, yeah, they tend to be a little bit fancier. So I don't have any other stuff yet because um, I don't have that many fancy places to go to, but um, I love their stuff. They make gorgeous dresses. They prioritize sustainability right here. The first thing on their website, they say being naked is the number one most sustainable option we're number two, 
and you can read about their their different um, design processes to um, reduce pollution, reduce uh, climate emissions, how the fabrics that they choose based on how eco-friendly they are, all of those different things. And they're developing technology to come up with more eco-friendly fabrics. Okay, the next one I have tried and I love, they are Amour Vert um, and they, I'm gonna go to their website now, and I know they have some, some really cool new pieces that I like because I get their catalog and I remembered I have to go um, visit. So they are sustainable, they are made in the United States, I think they are, um, in terms of like fanciness, they're maybe a, a step down or two um, from Reformation. So they have a lot more um, like basics and sweaters and things like that, but they still do have fun dresses. I am looking at, it looks, looks like a velvet dress here. They have patterns, they have florals. This is a fun like motorcycle jacket. Um, so, so they have, um, like I said, a lot of fun clothing too that is um, feminine. I know, I know there was this this top. Yeah, this is a, it's a lace top that I'm definitely adding to my Christmas lift with puffed sleeves. I love puffed sleeves, and this one is sixty eight dollars, which is not too bad. So then the next one I have also partnered with actually before on a blog post. Oh, I forgot to say, I'm an affiliate with The Real Real too. So if you sign up with The Real Real, I would love if you use the link in this blog post. That means that I get a percentage of, um, I get a commission with it or I get a percentage of the, the, the purchase. I don't know, I can't talk, to, <laughs> I can't think of the word but it's at no cost to you. So it basically is, um, it's rewarding me, it's an incentive for sharing this information. And I am only affiliate for things that I really believe in and support. Okay, so the next one is Tonle. I think that's how you say it. It's, um, oops, it's T-O-T-O-N-L-E -T -O with an accent mark over the E. Um, Tonle is um, zero waste um, and actually what they do, um, it's super cool. So they take, remember I talked about all those scraps? They actually um, take those scraps and they turn them into new garments. So they are very chic. Um, they tend to be a little bit more like boho. They're not as fancy. Um, they're very sustainable. When I got my t-shirt dress from them, I remember it came in a paper bag, like everything, the tag was um, paper, there was no plastic. Um, so, and I wrote a blog post about them. I really, really like them. I am looking at um, all of their garments <laughs> as I talk on this podcast and, um, and uh, YouTube, and they have just some really cool styles. They have a lot of fun wrap dresses. I think I forgot to tell you with our more vert, I got a wrap dress there and a wrap top. And their their fabrics, oh, I like this top. It is very, um, it's very soft and comfy, or at least the ones I got. So I really recommend them. Okay, the next ones I have not tried myself. Um, so these I got from a certified bee company website. So one is Karen Kane. And um, the reason why I chose to feature them in this website is, or in this um, episode is because they again have like more fun designs. Ooh, they have a whole animal inspired line. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be my new favorite place to shop. I don't think I knew about them before, but I am super excited to try them. And they seem like a little bit more casual too, but still kind of fancy. So check them out. And then a really famous one for actually doing sustainable work is Eileen Fisher. 
Um, and Eileen Fisher is, it's, it's a little bit pricier. Um, they're really great for basics though. Like um, they, they, they tend not to be as colorful. They're more muted colors, lots of sweaters. But again, like really great for those basics. They do tend to be a lot, not as much slim fitting as um, as I like, but they're um, a really great company that you should check out. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how much I have more to share. We are only like, let me see, I still have eight, ten different companies to talk about. Maybe I should do this in two different episodes. Let me, I'm gonna take a pause and think about that. I am gonna push through because I have all my content planned out for the rest of the year and um, I don't wanna push any of that stuff back. So I'm gonna go a little bit faster with these next few companies, but that doesn't mean they are not as good. So actually this next company, so these, these are, now we're getting into less, um, less fancy, so definitely more casual. We're starting to go into sportswear. So Patagonia, they are an amazing company. They are a certified B Corporation. They, um, you can buy secondhand from them. They very much care about the environment. They're an outdoors company. I actually have not owned, I don't think I've ever bought from Patagonia though, because I just didn't know about them until later. Um, but they are really great if you like hiking outdoors, if you like doing anything outdoors, you can get great stuff at Patagonia. And they're really about eco-friendly fabrics, an amazing, amazing company. Another one that I love is Athleta. Um, this is a sportswear company. Um, they also make like travel clothes too and they do make some regular clothes but they tend to be more sportswear influenced so this is a certified b company i loved athleta way before i knew they were a certified b company they um use recycled fabrics they um they also are very inclusive to different body sizes to different um people of different backgrounds all different ages i remember seeing them being more inclusive way before there was um, this movement to do so. So I love Athleta. They have really fashionable um, like yoga outfits. Um, and like I said, they have travel wear, they have dresses, they have amazing bathing suits. I love their bathing suits. Um, and they also work well for curvier women as, women as well because I am um, a little curvy. Okay, this next one is um, really fun. I actually, I ask for something from this place every single Christmas. So this is the World Wildlife Fund and they have, um, they have all sorts of gifts that you can give. Um, so they have, um, the things that I like to, to get are their t-shirts. They have really cute animal t-shirts. So I always ask for a new one of those um, every year and they're like, they're nicer t-shirts and they're made out of organic cotton. So I love getting those like little cute um, eco-friendly t-shirts, but they also have other apparel like socks, sweatshirts. I know they sell ornaments. Um, and, and some things like some kitchen things too, but the really cool thing is if, now if I were a kid, I would have freaking loved this. And it makes me so angry that they didn't have this when I was a little kid. But I always loved accurate toys. Like I really hated it when, um, actually that's not true. I liked either like really fantasy toys or really accurate toys. Like I didn't like it when people, or when toy companies would like make, I don't know, like a certain whale and they wouldn't make it look right, make it look like a real species. So what World Wildlife Fund does is they have these like little ambassador stuffed animals and they have some really cool, really unique species. So yes, they have elephants, giraffes, tigers, blah, 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 but they have animals like um, Tasmanian devils, they have a vaquita, which is a type of mini dolphin. It's an extremely endangered. They have uh, pink river dolphins, just like all these obscure animals. But the idea is to draw attention to them uh, because um, most of the animals in their uh, toy collection, their stuffed animal collection, are of important conservation concern. Look here. 
I have a visitor. This is little Bon Bons. Say hi, Bonnie. If you're on the podcast, sorry, you can't see her, but she's a she's a cute little orange kitten. She's sniffing the microphone right now. Okay, <laughs> back to work. So I really like World Wildlife Fund stuff, um, and I have worked alongside them. I've not worked with them, but in Gabon, I worked with the Wildlife Conservation Society, and they kind of divided the country in half. So um, we knew people who were working with the Wildlife World Wildlife Fund and um, in other parts of Gabon, and they're really doing great work. A company that I found recently, I'm not sure how sustainable they are. Um, let me look. But my niece actually um, told me about them, and I did buy, or I did ask for some things from them for Christmas. I think they're, they're really cool, even though I'm almost 40, I'm wearing the same types of clothes <laughs> as my nieces. Um, and this is Ivory Ella. I don't, I don't see anything about sustainability, so maybe they're not the most sustainable. But they help, um, and, if, and if, you, if you know, let me know. Um, but they help elephants. So a portion of all of their donations goes to the charity Save the Elephant, which is um, run by Ian Douglas Hamilton, and who was like the, like he was like the king, <laughs> like original, like scientist of elephants. He did such groundbreaking research for elephants in Kenya. And um, George Wittemeyer is also an amazing scientist who works with this organization. So this is a really great organization. They do really solid scientific research on um, conservation of, um, or on, on elephants and which helps their conservation. They work a lot with the local communities. They're based in Kenya. And even if you look at Ivory Ella's website, they even talk about um, funding schools in Kenya. And I love Ariella right now because they have these really fun tie-dye sweatshirts. I'm totally loving. So that's one um, that can help animals too. Okay, let's move in to accessories. Um, so to our socks, let's start with the socks. Um, so there are Bombos, which is um, a company, a certified bee company. I actually don't know that much about Bombos, but my brother loves them. And he says they're the best socks that he has ever had. Um, they're super comfortable, so I've always wanted to try them out. Um, and then there is um, another company. I thought I had their website up. Let me see if I can find it. It is um, Conscious Step, and they actually sent me some socks. And the reason why I really like Conscious Step socks is, um, so they're sustainably made. They um, also, all, all uh, a portion of the proceeds go to specific organizations. So you can buy socks that represent different causes. So for example, they sent me uh, shark socks, and and the reason why I like their socks is because a lot of times you find like these fun socks in stores, but they can be like really crazy. Like if you see shark socks, um, they might have like, you know, a gigantic shark swimming across it and it's like really obvious. Um, and sometimes it's fun to wear that stuff, but these socks, they're subtle. They're so they got like a little shark on them, but they're st subtle. So if you had an important business meeting, you could still wear them. Um, they're still very professional looking. So I love them too. Another jewelry place, um, they also sell some other stuff, is Four Ocean. They are a certified B company again. And they are famous for having these bracelets. They, um, looking at them right here now, they um, basically, they clean up the oceans, they take plastics, and they make these bracelets for you to wear. I have a couple of them. They are beautiful. They have some other products in here. And these are definitely more casual. Um, when I say jewelry, they're not, um, you know, really high-end jewelry. Um, so their bracelets go for like like $15, $20. They're great for kids. They also have um, some apparel. You can also just donate to them too if you just want them to like pull plastic from the oceans because it is such a gigantic problem. 
no pun intended. And actually, my family owns a jewelry business. I'm the daughter of a jeweler, and we sell four ocean bracelets at our store. So you can go to bengarellicjewelers.com. That's G A R E L I C K. Um, he's been um, a business owner for, let me see, I think 50 years. My dad, maybe even more than that, my dad's almost 80. I turn 40 next year, he turns 80. We're gonna have a 40, 80 birthday party. Okay, so uh, Fort Ocean, really great company. Okay, two more. I hope you're hanging in there with me. So um, these ones have to deal with food. The one that I am super excited about, this is Elephant Friendly Tea. Um, and this is from my friend, Dr. Lisa Mills. And um, she studied elephants, Asian elephants. And now she works with the um, farmers. Actually, hold, let me get the correct website. Okay, so I buy my elephant friendly tea from Elephant Origins as elephantorigins.com and these people, um, this corporation works with farmers in Southeast Asia to um, work with them to allow the elephants to go on their tea farms so that people don't try to poison them or kill them and this gives elephants more habitat to roam on. So um, Lisa will be on this podcast. I invited her. I'm super excited to talk more about this tea product and um, this is really great tea. It's high quality tea. It's delicious. I love it. It's more like gourmet. It actually won um, a World Tea Award for the best global tea excellence. So um, I'm super excited to talk more about that in the future. And then last but not least, um, we're gonna wrap up here. Alter Ego Chocolates. They are another certified B Corporation. I love chocolates. I eat these all the time. Um, I mostly buy the chocolate bars, but it looks like here they have things like truffles. Um, so, so yeah, if you are craving some holiday chocolate, ooh, they have mint ones here, perfect for the holidays, um, you can get some stocking stuffers with Alter Ego, um, and there's a lot that goes into chocolate in terms of sustainability and ethical work conditions, so it's really great to support from those companies. Okay, well, thanks so much for this long YouTube. I hope you learned a lot and subscribe because I'll give you more tips about conservation. I also have this on my podcast, so if it's easier for you to listen while you're driving, make sure you subscribe to the Fancy Scientist, the podcast, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.